Our last type of transformation is a dilation, and a dilation you might know from when you, if you've ever been to the eye doctor, every time I go to the eye doctor, they want to dilate my pupils, and the pupils are the dark part, that black portion of your eye, and the reason that they dilate them is so that it gets larger, so they can see inside of your eye, and you know, you have to wait a half an hour, and then like, you know, your eyes feel funny, and everything's blurry. But that's what a dilation is. It's when a figure is enlarged or reduced with respect to a point called the center of dilation. And you can see this picture here demonstrates that the red shape is getting larger or the blue shape, if that's the original, is getting shrunken or reduced. And the center of dilation that we're only going to deal with is the origin. We're not going to do any sort of um, dilations around other points other than, than the origin. Dilations are the only transformation that we talk about that don't form congruent figures. So haha, if you thought congruent figures went in here, you were wrong. Dilations form similar figures and that's why we talked about similar figures in an earlier lesson because similar figures are the same shape but different sizes and that's what dilations do they create shapes with different sizes tell whether the figure on the right is a dilation of the figure on the left so is this red image a dilation of the blue figure is it reduced or enlarged uh, version of the blue shape and hopefully you recognize the answer is not a dilation if we wanted to get specific, we would say that it was uh, potentially a reflection. And this right here, this is a small square, this is a large square, so the answer is yes, it is a dilation. In a dilation, the original figure and its image... In a dilation, the original figure and its image are similar. The ratio of the side lengths of the image to the corresponding side lengths of the original figure is what's called the scale factor. of the dilation. So let's look at the next example and um, I'll show you what the scale factor is all about. So what we do in the coordinate plane is we have a shape and in words what you're going to do to create this image a prime b prime c prime is multiply each value by the scale factor. And in algebra what we do is we call the scale factor the letter K so we don't have to write the phrase scale factor every time so we use the letter K so in algebra the way the way that we'd write that is we would have the coordinate point X comma Y and that would turn into the coordinate point K times X comma K times Y Now, if your k value, if your scale factor is a whole number like 2 or 5 or even a, a number greater than 1, 1 1.7, the shape will get larger. So the reason that this blue shape is larger than the red shape is because the scale factor was, in this case, it's actually 3. If the shape were to get smaller, like let's say the blue figure was the original and the red figure was the image, it, the way that you make it smaller is not by dividing, it's by multiplying by a fraction, like one-half, or two-thirds, or one-fifth, right? Multiplying by a fraction makes the number smaller. So we're always multiplying. It's just a question of, is the number getting smaller or larger based on the scale factor? So let's try an example. When you're dilating a figure, you are actually going to create the coordinate points first, and then you're going to plot them. This is different than the other ones that we were doing where you could have used the algebra technique, but you didn't really have to. And for rotations, there really wasn't an algebra technique. I mean, there is one, but it's let's save that for high school. Um, 
But when you're doing dilations, you are actually going to want to create the coordinates first. So what I'd like to do with you now is I'd like you to pause the video, plot the triangle, and then I will do the uh, image with you. Pause now. All right, let's create the coordinates. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new triangle with a scale factor of 3, which means you're multiplying by 3 each of the coordinates. So here we go. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So the new A prime, or A prime, is going to end up at the point 3, 9. 2 times 3 is 6. And 3 times 3 is 9. So B prime will end up at 6, 9. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. So C prime will end up at 6, 3. So let's graph it. I've got one point at 3, 9. That's A prime. Then I've got B prime at 6, 9. And C prime is at 6, 3. Create it. They should look like they're the same shape but obviously one is larger than the other, and we already have the new coordinates, and we just have to finally say whether it was an enlargement or a reduction. So did the shape get larger or smaller? Since the shape got larger, it is an enlargement. If you want to try example three on your own, go for it. If not, let's do it. Um, pause the video and please graph the rectangle WXYZ and play when you have that graphed. We have to dilate it with a scale factor of 0.5 so you're multiplying everything by 0.5 which mathematically is the same as chopping things in half. So here we go. Negative 4 times 0.5 is negative 2 negative 6 times 0 0.5 is negative 3. negative 4 times 0 0.5 is negative 2. 8 times 0 0.5 is 4. 4 times 0 0.5 is 2. and 4, I'm sorry, 8 times 0 0.5 is 4. 4 times 0 0.5 is negative, I'm sorry, positive 2. And negative 6 times 0 0.5 is negative 3. So let's plot that. And then we have to identify whether it was an enlargement or a reduction. Since the image is smaller than the original, it's a reduction. We're going to, in example four, do multiple transformations. We did the, a kind of example similar to this where we performed more than one transformation. So I'd like you to pause the video and try this one on your own. All right, check your work, and let's move on. This one's a little tricky, I think, um, because they want us to come up with a sequence of transformations, and there's many different combinations. So I'm just going to say one, and if you're cool with it, then we'll go with that. If you can come up with another one, fantastic. Um, but here's one that I can think of. In order to turn the blue image into the red image first obviously I hope you're gonna say it would have to get reflected over the x-axis so I'm just gonna draw what it would look like to the best of my abilities when you reflect it so it's equal distance from the x-axis 
Um, I think there. Yeah. That's it. So this would be what it would look like reflected over the x-axis. So first thing I'm going to do is reflect over or across x-axis. Then, if you think about it, I've got this point. I'm just going to pick this one right here. It's at 2, negative 1. And its corresponding part, which is here, is at 4, negative 2. So th learning, thinking about what we just learned, how do you turn the point 2, negative 1 into 4, negative 2? Because, if you notice, the picture is getting larger. You just learned about dilations, and so the next thing that I would tell my reader to do would be to dilate by a scale factor of 2. And if you dilate by a scale factor of 2, then the lengths are all double. Because if you look, this is length 1 box, and this is length 2 boxes. This is length 2 boxes, and this is length 4 boxes. And the slants are a little harder to describe. But if these two are proportional, then you can go ahead and assume that the rest is proportional. Also, it says that they're similar, so they have to be. So this would be um, the answer, one possible answer. You could have rotated it and dilated it. There's so many other things you could have done. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.